So today we're going to work on 618. And in this particular lab, this is IA 208, by the way, and we are working in our homework, chapter six, we're on page 37. 618 talks about a documented program to control the level of water in a storage tank by turning on a discharge pump. It starts off with the requirements. Here are the four requirements, and we see the word latch kind of made bold. So this would imply that I need to be able to latch on requirements here. Secondly, if we go to the next page, we will see that we've got some IO, and let me flip to the next page briefly here. And we can see that we've got some IO, and we're using the batch simulator. Um, we're gonna be using the stop and start button, and uh, the start stop button is wired normally closed. We've got the high level and the low level sensors. We've got a two position that we're using out of that three position selector switch. And most importantly, we see that we, we're, we've been requested to use a latching internal relay. They say specifically latch, unlatch, internal relay. That's a strong hint that they want you to use an internal relay that's gonna latch on under some circumstances and unlatch underneath others. Then we talk about a supply pump and a discharge pump, and of course, a run pilot light. So let's go back and look at our requirements. And in the requirements, we see that number one, with the control panel selector in A, when the level of the water in the tank reaches the high level, so there's one input, it's gotta be in A, it's gotta be at the high level, we wanna create a latch functionality and it needs to remain on. So by bolding latch, we assume that we're going to be turning on or latching on our internal bit when these conditions are true. So let's go to our um, let's go to our Logics Pro simulator, and I've got the um, Pro uh, Sim Batch simulator screen up, and. Uh, We've got all the I.O. here to do this. So let's uh, let's just start to dive in here. Look at our requirements. When the control panel selector switch is in the A position. So if I hover over the A position on the selector switch, it tells me it's input 109. So I'm just going to drop a normally open contact in here and drag that A position switch over to give it the address of 109. And then I'm going to right click and edit symbol to say uh, select A, all right? So that's the selector in A position. When the level of the water in the tank reaches high level, so the high level sensor turns on when it reaches high level. So we want to have that as a condition as well. I just put in another normally open contact. And I'll drag in the address of the high level sensor and I rename it to be I-level. Okay. And so now I know that that's going to be latched on if it's in position A in high level. And then my output is going to be a special kind of latching output coil. And I'm going to associate it with that B address that they suggested I use. Right, and so what's the easiest way to find your internal addresses? I just click on the little wrench and hammer, and then underneath the table, I select binary B3. And then they want me to use, I just checking, it just sounds like, all right, just bit zero. So I go to the row of B3 zero slash, and I go to the far right little O, down here, and I drag that little O, not the zero above it, but the little O into that address, and that should give me um, B300. And I want to name this, so I right-click on it, I hit the edit symbol, and I type in latch, slash, unlatch, bit. Okay, so that's going to latch on, um, my discharge pump. But by latching on the bitch, I'm not actually latching on the discharge pump yet. So to use that bit, I need to 
add another line in here that's going to give me the control over the actual discharge pump. So in this case, I'm going to say when it's latched on, I'm just going to drag that same address over, then turn on the pump. So for turning on a pump, I'm just going to use a normal output energized coil, drop that in, and then in this case, it's a discharge pump. So I'm going to go down to my simulator and just grab that address. And I'm going to right click and edit symbol, call it discharge. Discharge pump. So we latching on the discharge pump. So in the control panel, A, then the level of water will latch on, remain on until the water reaches a low level. So here is a third requirement. It's going to remain on until the water reaches the low level. That means when the low level sensor turns off, because don't forget, in the case of this batch simulator, that low level sensor stays on until the water drops below it, then it turns off. So in this case, I want to unlatch that bitch, bit, a uh, bit, I'm sorry, unlatch the bit when the low level sensor turns off. So I'm going to use opposite logic. So I drop the low level sensor in there, and then I'm going to drop an unlatch bit, bit in there. And so let's drag the address for the bit. And then we're going to drag the low level sensor address into here. And we're going to right click and change it to be low. OK. Please forgive my, um, uh, it's morning time here recording. So we've got selector switch and the high level switch both on, it latches on that bit. Then the bit being latched on starts the pump. And then when the low level sensor turns off, it unlatches that particular bit. And then the pump will come off. So before we go any further, let's go ahead and test this. So I'm going to go online. Download, put it into run mode, and let's, um, well, actually, I can't really test this until I have some way of filling up that tank manually. So let's go look at the circuit I need to fill the tank. Let that first requirement hit. Let's, uh, let's go look at the, if I can get the requirement to fill the tank. So let's go back offline and see if we can't find that requirement. Um, the second requirement <clears throat> talks about the B position in the selector switch. So it says in B position, this charge pump will start automatically if the water in a tank is at any level except low, right? So if this is in B position, it doesn't need to reach the high level. In B position, it doesn't need to hit the high level. And then it will automatically turn off at low level. So if it's already at low level, I probably don't want to let this discharge pump turn on. Um, but so let's talk about that particular requirement. I'm going to skip that requirement for now. Let's go to the third requirement, which lets me test the first one briefly. Use the control panel start, stop, push button statement to operate the supply pump motor to change the level of water in a tank. Do not allow this input pump motor to operate if the high level has been reached. All right, so basically, this is basically telling me this is how I fill the tank. I'm going to use the stop, start, push button and run the supply pump motor. And so this for this is implying a basic motor control circuit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, drag another line down here. I'm going to drag a, um, a little bit of a branch in there, because in a basic motor control circuit, I need to have an output coil that then latches itself in. Um, the I'm just going to drag a bunch of normally open contacts in there because I'm using a wired normally closed stop push button. 
Uh, I will use a open, normally open contact. So that's my stop push button. Let's right click and make it stop. And then I'm going to start PB is going to be the next one along. So I drag the wrong one over. Let's drag the right one over. Okay. And then um, the last one would be the supply pump. And the supply pump, I believe we're talking about output one here. Let's just check real quick. Uh, supply pump, yes, it is output one. So this is one at the top here. We're going to drag the address for that as the latching contact and then also into the output. And we're going to right click and we're going to type, type in supply. So that basically is the circuit to latch on the supply pump. However, uh, we, we don't want the supply pump to necessarily latch on if the high level sensor um, is, is basically turned on. So this is sort of one of these unwritten requirements. You, it's sort of an optional requirement, but let's put that in there simply because if this this if the high level sensor is on, I don't really want to run the supply pump. So when it's off, it's okay. That means I'm using reverse logic. When it's off, I want it to transmit power, and I'll drag my high level sensor in there. So that basically sets up the circuit that'll let me run that pump until it hits the high level sensor. We are kind of looking at the requirement as an extra requirement here of not running it run over the high level sensor. The requirement in the book specifically doesn't ask for that, but I'm adding that as a, an extra feature to make sure that if I forget, I won't overflow the tank. So let's go online. Let's download and run this. So now I should be able to hit the start button and fill the tank. Oops. Well, that seemed to work because what happened is when it hit the high level sensor, then it latched on that bit. Let's slow this down a little bit, slow it down. Let's hit the start button. All right, so now it hit the high level bang and now my bit is latched on, my discharge pump is running. And then when it, the low level sensor turned off, right, the inverse logic on the low level sensor unlatched the bit. So when the low level sensor turned off, it unlatched a bit. The unlatch turned on and then the pump shut down, right? So if I fill up the tank and fill it halfway, at this point, I'm going to get into requirement number two. Because requirement number two says that the water selector switch in position B, the discharge pump will start automatically if the water in the tank is at any level except low and remain on until the water level reaches the low level. So we want to have a different way of latching on that discharge pump. So let's go offline. Let's talk about how we can do that. We need to change the rung that does the latching to add another possibility, the either A selector or high level, or some other possibility needs to latch that bit on. And the other possibility would be if, if, if I'm in B position and my low level sensor hasn't been reached. In other words, low level sensor is still on. So let's drag a little run. Um, we call a run branch in there. Oops, I dragged to the wrong spot. Let's try this again. Drag the run branch in there. Let's drag in into that branch, my current uh, option, in selection A option, it's gonna latch on to the high level. And now I wanna put in a selection B option. So I'll just pull in another normal open contact and drag over my B option address. And then let's right click and hit edit simple to say select B. All right. 
And what was the other requirement? Oh, yes, the low level sensor had to be on. In other words, there was still water in the tank. So let's drag a milk and contact saying it needs to be on. That means that I'm using only open contact to enable the circuit. So in selector A or selector B and low level sensor has to be on. Either the high level has to be on in selector A or the not, the, you know, low level sensor has to be on, but it's not, it's basically not off, which means there's no water in the tank. And that should work. And but before we test it, let's throw this last requirement in because it's a pretty simple one. Have the run pilot light come on Whenever the discharge pump is operating, that's super easy. Let's just drag a run down into the bottom here. So when the discharge pump is operating, that's simply saying when something is on, I'll use it only open contact, turn something else on. And so when there's something on is the discharge pump. So I'll just drag that address down. When the discharge pump is on, I'm going to turn on a pilot light. So I'm going to drag the run pilot light address over here into my coil. And I'm going to right click, edit symbol, say run pilot light. So I think I'm done, but wait, they did something sneaky here. They give you a second requirement packed into the last requirement. Do not allow the discharge pump to operate if the supply pump motor is operating. So this is my bit for the discharge pump. I've got my unlatch bit. So how do I keep the discharge pump from operating if the supply pump is operating? Um, basically, the simplest way to do that is to simply put a, you know, uh, a break in the line that's turning on that discharge pump. Say, if the supply pump is on, then don't let the dish pump turn on. So that's opposite logic. So I'm going to use a normally closed contact. And then I'll say, if that supply pump is on, don't turn on the discharge pump. So if the supply pump is off, all's well. You can run the discharge pump. If it's on, that opens up this contact. And my discharge pump can't run. And that gets me that final requirement here. So this gets two check marks because there's kind of two requirements baked into one. So let's go ahead and test this. So we're going to go online. We're going to download it. And we're going to run it. All right. So first thing we're going to do is put it to A to make sure that we still operate properly. We're going to start my supply pump, and it should go to the high level and stop. Oh, and now it's emptying out. And then when it hits the low level, it stops. There's no fire. Good. Now let's test the B functionality. This time we're going to start it and stop it midway. Whoop! it emptied out. And the run pilot light is on. And see, the run light's on now. So it's working properly. So if I hit start, anytime I hit stop, it should start emptying out in the B selector switch. So it automatically empties out unless the supply pump is running. And so the last thing I'm going to do, which I think I might have forgotten in the last exercise, is I'm going to go back to programming mode and offline. And we're going to right click on the first rung and we're going to put in some run comments. Now this one is getting a little compli complicated. 6 dash 18. Um, this one's getting a little complicated. So you may want to add uh, a run comment on say the supply pump rung, say this rung operates the Okay, you might want to add some comments to help you find the right spot that operates that bit of code from your requirement. And this gives you an example of a couple different run comments that you might put in here. So that's pretty much it for this requirement. We've tested it. It works great. And uh, let's move on.